Hey guys, welcome back to Nike. In today's video, I want to talk about something that I think is absolutely awesome in the game, and that is the way shields work. Now, I did find out about this through Tamias. He made a video talking about two units uh, that he thinks are underrated, which was an absolutely fantastic video. He goes deep on Senti and also on Rupe, so definitely go check that one out. I'll leave a link in the description. But in that video, he basically mentions about how they found out the way shields work in this game. So I want to extend on that and talk about some other characters and some ways and strategies you can use to actually get through some of the stages especially the ones with those suicide bombers those annoying balls that they always drop like six of them at a time and then they just basically one shot a character when they jump into them um so i wanted to talk about a strategy for that uh with some other units as well but just to kick it off, we'll go through the basics of the way shields work in this game. Um, it's something that works in like, I think it's like Warframe and stuff like that have this, but I haven't seen many gotcha games that have it, but in this game, it really does make sense because it's not like a turn-based game where you're taking turns so that you can get really penalized from it, but you can use it quite nicely in campaign. So essentially what happens is with a shield in this game, uh, as opposed to other games where you've got a shield and let's just play with basic numbers. Say your shield value is 10 and an enemy does damage of 100. In, in a lot of cases, that would mean the shield takes 10 damage and you take 90. In this game, the shield is like a substitute. So if your shield value is 10 and the enemy does 100 damage on a single hit, it's only on the single hit, uh, and they do 100 damage into that 10 shield, you take nothing. It, all it does is overkill the shield. So unfortunately, this doesn't work in the Grave Digger. This would have been great if it worked in S Intercept, but his the, that damage is like sort of ticking damage. So basically what you'd find is the first tick will kill the shield and then he'll just go and melt you with the other ticks. So unfortunately not there, but like I said, the Suicide Bombers, it works really well. Now I'll, I'll go quickly into Senti because Senti has been my favorite character design in the game from the start. And basically... Early on, you know, it was all DPS race, which made her useless. But in the end game, um, players are finding that she's actually amazing because of the way that shields work. So I'll look at her and then I'll look at some other characters that you can use to and, and the strategy to kind of abuse this tactic. So if we go over here uh, into burst twos and we go to Senti, once again, greatest design in the game, fight me for it. But if we go to her skills, basically her second skill here affects all allies, creates a shield that is equal to 6.38% of the caster's max HP for five seconds. Now this is on a nine second cooldown and every time she does a fully charged attack, it reduces the cooldown by 9.16%. This is max skills. Um, but she does reduce the cooldown. So she's going to be getting a shield for five seconds up fairly often. Now they are low value shields and while they're nice for ignoring that, like the burst damage like it means little damage can break them as well so when you think about it like that if you had a bigger shield say you had a shield of 100 and the enemy did 90 damage into it you'd still have 10 and if their next damage was a thousand that 10 on the shield would absorb that whole thousand so having a bigger shield is still nice because if you're getting little bits of damage it won't break and that way you can stay around for the big burst that comes so you know she does have the lower shield compared to other units but because it's got such a high uptime that's what makes her so amazing for avoiding the big burst damage that can come in so that is Senti. The other ones I want to look at uh, and, and talk about a strategy you can use with these units because Senti you can't really control too well. It's just basically when it's up, it's up. She uses it and when it's gone, it's gone. So ones that you can manually control. Now, Polly is a unit that I use and unfortunately she her shield doesn't work the way it's stated. So in Polly's description, it says affects all allies, gains a shield equal to 14% of the caster's maximum HP for 10 seconds and attack up 29% for 10 seconds. Now, unfortunately, the shield only applies to herself at the moment, which I believe is a bug, but maybe the description's wrong. So I'm not too sure, but Polly's shield only applies to herself, which means it's not as good for mitigating that damage on everyone. But if a self-destructing unit is targeting her, you know, it's still effective, but unfortunately not so good. But the attack buff, if you are using Polly, still does apply to your entire team. Uh, the, the shield never stressed me because I didn't realize the shields worked this way. So I was just using poly mainly for the attack buff. Um, but it's nice that, uh, you know, it would be nice now that we know how shields work if she did actually shield the whole team. So the, the main one I want to look at is actually going to be Arya here. So Arya is quite nice because 
Her burst skill is just a shield and some hit rate for herself, but it is an all allies shield. So all of your allies will get this shield from her. So she's a really good one to use with this. Just keep in mind, Polly and Arya are both 40 second cooldown burst two units. So you can use them together. Um, but you know, if you bring an Arya for the shield, you just got to remember that, um, that it is a 40 second cooldown. You'll have to have another burst two on your team. But what you can do with this is, um, and I'll show you an example. We'll just jump into campaign. Like I won't be able to do it because I'm at a boss stage um, on chapter 12 and it doesn't have any jumpers and then I've got like another stage in here that I'll test it on but uh, unfortunately there's no jumpers in this one so um, dude this boss the, the, the little turrets do so much damage anyway let's jump in here and I'll basically show you what the strategy is that you can use um, to sort of play this to your advantage so let's just jump in here and take a quick look uh, essentially what you're doing is putting it on manual burst abilities and spacing your burst abilities. Because often what happens is when you're fighting against what, like uh, stages that have a bunch of those suicide units and you, you guys know the suicide units I'm talking about. They're the balls that land on the ground or they fly and they have like a countdown timer and then they just shoot themselves into someone and basically just one shot people. So the way you can abuse this with something like Aria, and you can play around with this with anything that has shields. This Aria is the easy example that I have because Polly doesn't work. Um, but basically, if you're on a stage, let's say, and you know, there's a the, the, the suicide bombers come in. What you can do is say right now, this is when the suicide bombers are here. What I can do is I can use my burst one ability and then I can use the burst two ability. So now my whole team is shielded, meaning if the enemy bombers jump into me, it's good. The reason I don't wanna go through and use my burst three ability is because the burst three ability, yes, it would kill the suicide bombers, but why not use the shield from the burst two to let them kill themselves running into the shield because then they'll die, the shield will die, but you won't take any damage. And then you have about, I think it's like eight seconds, uh, about nine seconds to time to wait for this burst to run out because often what happens in stages is when they drop a bunch of those suicide bombing units um they basically jump and then straight after the suicide bombing units die because they've jumped it drops like a whole nother wave i've noticed this on many stages it drops a whole nother wave of enemies and if you've used your burst three aoe to kill the bombers the next wave of things just overwhelm you. So what you can do is you can time it, use your burst two ability with a shield with something like an Aria, avoid the damage from the bombers and let them kill themselves. And then in those nine seconds you're waiting, you can hold out on your AOE and then you can use your AOE like Scarlet, Haran, any other AOE you have to kill the next wave of units. It's a really, really solid strategy. And the cool thing about this is because you're using your burst one and burst two ability so quick and then waiting for the burst three, it doesn't affect when, like, so the, the waiting for your burst three doesn't affect your next burst wave because you're gonna, your burst one and two are still gonna be available and then your other burst three unit is gonna be available as well. So there's no harm in holding out on timing for that final burst three. The only thing it does do is slow down uh, when you can get to your fully charged. Um, but for me, it's not such a big uh, big deal because I don't have any of the cooldown reducing units. Obviously, if you do, then it will become a bit of an issue. But once again, if you're, if you're avoiding two key points of failure being bombers and then the wave of units after the bombers by timing in between using the shield to negate the bombers and then the AOE to kill the next wave, it's a really cool strategy to get through some annoying stages because especially here in chapter 12, there's a lot of those suicide bomber stages that are absolutely frustrating. So just cool little strategy to use with that, um, which I absolutely love. Once again, big shout out to Tamias for putting that information out there. I just wanted to extend and show you guys some other strategies in case you don't have the senti for that nice passive shield or anything like that and you are getting stuck on those bomber stages. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.